Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting Blender tutorial. Whenever you render images in Blender using Cycles, which is Blender's powerful ray tracing engine, you're likely going to end up with quite a bit of grain and noise in the final image. Ooh. Now, you can easily jack up the sample count to increase the accuracy of your final renders and therefore reduce the noise, but increased sample count also means longer rendering times. Fortunately, there's a really quick and easy way to denoise your final render in Blender using Blender's inbuilt denoising function, and that's what I want to show you in this tutorial. Also, with the next release of Blender, version 2.81, hitting us sometime in November, we are going to see a brand new AI based Intel Open Image Denoiser that I also want to show you just to get you excited about all of the cool stuff that will be coming soon. Now, this is going to be a low intermediate tutorial, and I will assume that you are at least familiar with the basics of Blender. If you're brand new to it all, I'm going to drop you links to some of my beginner tutorials down in the video description, so be sure to check those out first before you come back here. But now, before this gets any grainier, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have a very simple scene set up here with a Suzanne monkey head and a bit of an environment texture going on. Right now, I'm rendering this out using Eevee. And if we hit F12 to render our final image, that gives us a final render really nice and quick. If you zoom in, there isn't really any noise at all. And that is because Eevee is not a ray tracing rendering engine. And noise in your final render usually comes from ray tracing engines such as Cycles. Now, the reason you'd want to use ray tracing over Eevee is that ray tracing gives you a lot of advanced features that Eevee at least not yet supports. So let's close this render out, come into our properties panel, bottom right hand side and into the render context. Let's switch the render engine from Eevee over to Cycles. And this is now using the Cycles Ray Trace Rendering Engine. And if this is a little bit slow, make sure that you come up into your main menu and under Edit Preferences, come into the System Settings and make sure that if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you enable CUDA, which is GPU Acceleration. Or if you don't have an NVIDIA card, just enable OpenCL. Let's close this out. And you'll notice that this renders just as slow as before. And that is because over on the right hand side, in the render context in our properties window, we need to make sure that we switch the device from CPU over to GPU compute. This will now use the GPU to do the ray tracing and you'll notice this goes a whole lot quicker already. Let's hit F12 and render this out. And I'm speeding up the video here just so you don't have to sit through this. Just be aware that my computer doesn't really render quite that fast. So here's the final image, it took 37 seconds. And if you now zoom in, you'll notice there's actually quite a lot of noise in this image. And that comes from the fact that well, the sample rate for our render settings was quite low. So Cycles would only have used a limited number of rays to essentially ray trace and render out this image. There are a number of things you can do to reduce the noise in your final render. The first one is very simple and that is in your render context, just under where you select the engine, you got sampling options. And right now this is set to render with 128 samples when you're rendering it. In your viewport, like in your preview window, you'll only see 32, which is why if I make this smaller and just move around my viewport, this only renders with 32 samples, but the final render uses 128. If you jack this up to let's say 300 or something, your final render will be a whole lot smoother. So let's render that out. Again, speeding this up for your sanity. And now, well, there's still quite a bit of noise, but it is a whole lot less than we had when we were rendering out with 128 samples. However, the time it took to render is now 1 minute and 21 seconds as opposed to 37 seconds. So as you increase your number of samples, the rendering time will go up. So eventually you'll hit a point where it's, you know, it feels like it's almost no longer worth it. An easier way is to actually use the denoising function in Blender to get rid of all of this noise. Let's reduce the number of samples back to 128. Let's come into the view layer tab in the properties panel, which is where you define your view layers, your render paths and a whole bunch of other things. Let's come down to the bottom and there's this little option here for denoising. You can simply enable that. This is a post processing step. Expand this and you get a whole bunch of additional options here. The way this works is essentially after the rendering is done, a post process will run over your image and essentially denoise it. 
So the radius is the search area, the amount of pixels that the denoiser will look at for every pixel. So the larger the search radius, the smoother the image will be, but the more detail you might lose if you have a very, you know, like a very detailed model. Strength is how much denoising will happen. Feature strength tries to retain some of the low little details. So again, play around with this a little bit. And then you can decide which types of light you actually want to denoise. You can separately denoise your diffuse channel, your glossy, your transmission, your subsurface, and you can either diffuse the direct or the indirect rays. So direct rays are the initial direct rays that are hitting your object. Indirect is something that bounces somewhere off and then hits your object. So it's an indirect bounce. So you can denoise either of them. But let's leave all of that on the default settings. Back in the render context, our render samples is set to 128. So that's kind of our initial noisy image. And again, let's just render this out. And you can already see how the post-processing is being applied square by square to essentially get rid of all of this noise. Let's zoom out and let this render all the way to the end. This render now took 51 seconds, so a little bit longer than our initial render. But if you now zoom in, this is actually very smooth. A lot of the grain and the noise is gone. But do know that, you know, some of the details may be smudged up just a little bit due to that denoising process. And there's just something, you know, you kind of got a balance between how many render samples you want to use and then how strongly you want to denoise the image. Now, this is using Blender 2.8, which is the current stable release. However, in Blender 2.81, which is coming out in November, so it's actually coming pretty soon, the Blender team has implemented the Intel Open Image Denoiser, which is an AI-based ray tracing image denoiser. In order to try this out, you can actually come to the Blender download page, which is blender.org slash download. And rather than clicking this big friendly blue button, you come down a little bit and there's an option here to go experimental. And in here you can actually get the current latest build, which isn't stable, so wouldn't recommend it for your production, but you can get Blender 2.81, which will be the upcoming version. Once you've downloaded Blender 2.81, in our render settings, I'm on cycles. I'm using GPU compute in the layer properties. At the bottom, denoising is disabled. So let's render this out. We're down to 35 seconds now. But again, we have a pretty noisy image. And let's do something really cool. I haven't shown you guys that yet, but obviously if you're familiar with Blender, you already know. Let's come back to the main interface. Right click on the top bar at the bottom right here and select to horizontal split this one. I'm going to insert a new view at the top and I'm going to change the view from the 3D viewport over to the compositor. And in case you don't know, you can actually do image compositing and movie compositing directly in Blender. So in this compositor, you actually, it's like a node based workflow to post process your image. So let's hit shift and A. And remember, this is in Blender version 2.81, which is the current experimental build. If you're on 2.80, this will not work because you won't have the node. So let's go search and search for denoise. Select that, drop this node in. And this is the Intel Open Image Denoising node. And now we can feed the image from the render layer to the output from the render layer into the denoiser. Actually, I might change the bottom view, which right now is our 3D view. Let's change this over to the image editor and over on the right hand side, right in the middle. And let's actually select to view our render result just so we can see both things at once. Let's zoom in. So this is where all of the noise is. And now let's connect the output of this denoiser to our final composite. And it's immediately denoised and I'm not sure whether you remember, but this actually has quite a bit more detail. It's a much more intelligent AI based denoising process. It works really nice and fast and this can get actually even more advanced. In the layer properties, you can actually enable something called denoising data and actually have a look up here at the top in this render layers node in the compositor view on the right hand side under layers. Let me enable denoising data and that actually adds a whole bunch of different outputs to your basic render layer, but you will now have to re-render the image. So let's just re-render that with F12. And again, if we zoom in, this is nicely denoised, but let's connect this Intel Open Image Denoise node a little bit differently because we now have a whole bunch of different outputs and we can feed more information into this AI based denoising function and we'll just get a better result. So rather than using the raw image, let's feed the noisy image 
into the image input for our denoising function. And then the denoiser also has input for the normal vector, like the direction of the surface of this image, as well as the albedo, which is the diffuse lighting. Now we've got this denoising normal output here. And actually, let me just connect that to the output so you can see what that looks like. So that's essentially the normal data of this rendered image. Okay, let's feed that actually into the denoising node onto the normal. Let me grab the denoising albedo. And again, let's just have a look at that. So that's kind of the diffuse lighting on this monkey. And again, let's take this and feed that into the albedo on our denoiser. And then the output of the denoiser goes into our final composite. And now if you zoom in, well, I can actually see a few artifacts right here. Let me disconnect the albedo. Yeah, there it's gone. This is much nicer. So I'm not sure whether there are still a few things not quite working with this node just yet, or whether I'm missing a setting somewhere. But this is now AI image denoise with the Intel Open Image Denoiser. And this will come soon in Blender 2.81. By the way, if you want tutorials on how the compositor works or other things of Blender, I want to make more tutorials for it. I just haven't really gotten around to it. But hopefully this will give you an insight into some of the cool stuff that you can already do in Blender 2.8, which is just enabling denoising the bottom of your layers panel just enable denoising here and you'll get denoising out of the box so you don't need to jack up your render samples which will make render time slower. Now this was a little bit of a quick and dirty but hopefully it gave you the first insight into how you can easily denoise your images straight out of Blender. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video please hit that like button. If you're new here hit that subscribe button and if you want to watch more just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.